One of the most important and powerful components of Yumi Deadly Maths Pedagogy is this cycle. The reality, abstraction, mathematics, reflection cycle, or how we call it, the Ramra cycle. This cycle was an idea of an indigenous mathematics educator called Dr. Chris Matthews. He wanted to teach mathematics the same way as it was created and invented. And the creation of invention of mathematics goes through four steps. It usually starts with someone who's got a problem. And so they look at their reality, we've got to solve this. So what they do is they sit down and try and think of a way to solve it. They abstract it, and usually it ends up with a whole lot of invented mathematics in the form of symbols or symbol relationships. Then they take that mathematics and they reflect it back into reality. And if they find the mathematics help their reality, they keep it. If it didn't, they don't keep it. So that is the way that mathematics was invented. It has some interesting implications for mathematics as we teach it. The first of these is it's highly creative and a very problem-solving activity, and we seem to have lost that in the teaching of mathematics. Secondly, it's aimed towards symbols. You've got to understand the relationship between the symbols here and the reality there, and the fact that the symbols here become, quite, become their own language and structure. Lastly, it has the cultural bias of the group that did the abstracting. And since we teach a European maths, we have to understand we have a European bias in our mathematics, which we must take into account when teaching non-European cultures. What we did with this mathematics is that we took it and we added all the other ways that we knew about teaching mathematics. And we came up with a four-step process for teaching mathematics that contains everything we think is good about teaching mathematics. The first stage in reality, we put three steps in it. And then we moved on to abstraction, and then we moved on to mathematics, and then on to reflection, and then back on to reality. So in other words, we've developed this lesson structure that goes reality, abstraction, mathematics, and reflection, and then rolls on again for the next thing we want to teach. Now, each of these steps in the Ramra cycle, as we call it, is, can be looked at in more detail. So let's look at the first one, reality. In reality, we put three things into it that you should do as a teacher. The first one is something you should do before you start the lesson, is get to know your students and identify something that's important to them in their local, cultural, environmental knowledge that we can use to introduce the idea. Once you've thought up the idea, then go and look and see, do they have the knowledge to be able to go on to this? Because, because they might not know some of the prerequisites. And then begin by creating a kinesthetic activity. Kinesthetic activities mean something where they move and you know, and the learning comes from that, their, their body action, just as mine is right now, and that we can introduce the idea. One one we had, we were trying to look at ordering of two-digit numbers, and we got the idea we could go and look at the rugby league field, because it was in 10-metre lots, and we could ask them to run 32 metres, and they'd run 32 metres, three 10 minutes and, and two little steps, and then they could run 29 metres and see that 29 metres is actually less than 32 in the way they're running with their body and they were doing something that they liked and enjoyed doing it. The important thing to do, remember, in reality is it's something that interests the kids, not interests you as teachers. Second, then we move on to abstraction. And abstraction, again, has three components. The first one is we have to try and think of ways in which we can move from the world to the symbols. So that means we try and get some physical ways we can do things, both physical activities and physical materials, we then can go to a computer and use virtual manipulations and pictures, which we draw with our hands, and then finally on to language and symbols. And this is best done by using body, hand, mind activities. But added to that, try and add in a bit of creativity into your lesson. One way to do that is to allow the students to develop their own ways of doing things before you force on them the way of doing uh, that everyone else uses. I remember talking to a grade eight teacher and he was trying to introduce the formula for 
mean or average of a set of things. Now the kids knew they had to add them up, you know, and they had to divide by. And so I said to him, why not, when you ask them, you think of a, you know, a way of, of writing that with symbols before you actually give them your lovely thing with S and, and the big sum and a, that, Z, that thing that they use for a summing. Right, the next step is the mathematics. And here's where we do go a bit formal. We have to get across the formal language and symbols that everyone else uses so the kids can communicate to other people. We have to be able to give them practice so they become familiar with the idea to where they can use it without that uh, un not knowingness that leads to worry and concern, right? Eh? And lastly, and this is an important one, if we're going to understand and know something, we've got to connect it to all our other previous knowledge. So if we were doing subtraction, we've got to connect it to addition. We've got to connect addition to numbers and the act of joining. And so people get their knowledge in a much more connected way. Lastly, or are we lastly? Yes, we are indeed. We get on to reflection. And in that one, there's three stages as well. The first one is to set problems that apply the idea, do problem solving applications back into the kid's world so they can take their knowledge back into their world. Second, lead discussion so the kids can validate their knowledge in terms of their own world. So it's no good, uh, some kids say, oh, you do that in mathematics, it's nothing to do with my world, and that's really hard. I remember some kids were very good at card games. They could add their cards out to work out their numbers, but if you put the numbers on the board, they couldn't do it, which is you know, uh, not what we want. We want that connection. And lastly, it is possible here to make a gestalt jump of learning that doesn't require you to go through the cycle. Now, there are four ways of doing that. First of all, make sure right through the cycle, not just at the end, but right through the cycle, that you're flexible. That if you develop three quarters, you say, what else could three quarters be? 75 cents, 75 percent, 750 millimetres, 45 minutes on a clock, 270 degrees in a circle. So they get the idea that three quarters is many places in the world. Secondly, reverse. Hi, here's a piece of paper. That's a one. Make me a half. Okay, I'm going to get another piece of paper. This one just happens to be a half. Now I want you to make me a whole. So you sit and think to yourself, what did I say? What do the kids do? Turn it around. I'll do what the kids do and they'll do what I do. Right? And do that thing all the time. The next one is generalising. They can do 24 plus 48 problems, so you say to them, right, I'm not going to give you the numbers now, I'm just going to say, you've got any two numbers, you tell me how you'd add them. And you want them to say something like, well, I put the tens and ones and the tens and ones separately, I'd add the ones, you know, I'd add the tens and I'd put them together. And then you, if they've got that in their head, you can then change parameters, you can say, all right, that's two digits, how do you think you do it in three digits? And they might just be able to make the jump very quickly without having to go through everything that's going. Well, at any rate, that's the mighty Ramra cycle teaching. You go from reality to abstraction to maths and critical reflection. We've got a nice set of posters we can send you that you can put in your room, but that's the idea of the Ramra cycle. And I can only say that to many of the schools that have taken this up, they really like this cycle. It helps them to plan their lessons. It helps them to teach kids in a way that kids can understand. Thank <laughs> you.